Hi, my vice astrology tribe, Cosmic Insight Astrology. I am your co-pilot, Christina. Let's talk about genius indicators in astrology chart today. So first of all, I told you before, before you analyze anything and if you do your research, what kind of indicators of autism, massive shooting, geniuses, you have to check the roots. You have to know the definition of the genius. So genius actually is an exceptional intellectual or creative power. It is like not a natural ability. It is like something exceptional, right? So there is a few genius out there and that was uh, Albert Einstein. And we were just talking about him uh, in my previous uh, uh, podcast and also there is Elon Musk so I'm going to show that chart definitely for you right now I share the chart with you and I'm going to see the indicators over here and then after I'm going to bring up uh, uh, Albert Einstein and Musk, Elon Musk uh, chart again but then let's talk about um, what is the genius indicators in our chart so in astrology there have to be a prominent Jupiter energy. Jupiter is associated with higher education. It's associated with the way we can, we can approach learnings, right? Okay, and what the other planet, what we need to look? The other planet is Mercury. Okay, so we need a prominent Jupiter. What is a prominent Jupiter planet here? So a prominent Jupiter, if Jupiter is in Cancer, and especially if Jupiter is in Cancer five degrees, because that Jupiter is exalted over there. Okay, what other Jupiter aspect could be? Like if Jupiter, for example, in Sagittarius, in its own ruler sign, or Jupiter actually is in uh, Pisces because uh, Jupiter rules those signs. And what about Mercury? So Mercury is really good if it is, and it is a genius indicator, if it's actually in Gemini, in its own sign, or exalted in Virgo, for example, okay? Or it's in Aquarius. In Aquarius also, indicates a genius okay okay so let me see all right so that's the indicator so you also have to see if the sun moon this is higher education ninth house if the sun moon uranus or mercury it's in the ninth house that is also an indicator for a genius in astrology what else? If you have grand trine between Mercury, Uranus, and Moon, so check your children chart and check your chart also. If you have a grand trine in, in between Uranus, Mercury, and Moon, that is an indicator and anchor for a genius person. There is also a kite formation with Pluto, Moon, Uranus, and Mercury. So if you have a kite in your chart with the planets involved Pluto, Moon, Uranus, and Mercury, that's also an other indicator, for example, for genius. Or, you know what, if you have a grand fire trine, if you have a grand fire trine, that is also an indicator for a genius. That's very good. All right, I do have grand fire time, but actually I have North Node involved and North Node is not a planet, but it's purpose. So it's also beautiful and it's an indicator. All right, uh, what houses are we checking over here? So the third house is belong from Mercury and communication. And it's also belong from um, like, like because Mercury is the planet of... Um, the way we are um, capable to, to process information. So 
So Mercury, it's uh, like the ability of process information. And Jupiter is the way or learning habit or learning way. And, and, but also that is higher education and Mercury, it's lower. So until high school, end of high school. And Jupiter takes over the ninth house after high school, that is college, and that is universities, masters, doctorates, right? Okay, so what other things we are looking for? We are looking for... Mercury, Uranus, Moon, or Sun, either in third, ninth house, okay, or actually in the first house as well, close to the ascendant. And we also looking for midheaven. Midheaven is related to your vocation, the, the career that you're going to choose. And um, if you have either mid heaven conjunct with sun uranus or mercury or either with moon that is an indicator of what it's an indicator of genius look at that chart so mercury is very close to mid heaven conjunction and i know the mid heaven is 23 degrees taurus and the sun 11 degrees taurus but it's Feel a wired conjunction because of the orb of sun is 17. So that's why we, it is, it's considering to be a very wide conjunction. So that is a second indicator. And also if I, I think I was talking about that if Mercury is in your third house. So if Mercury is in your third house, that's another indicator or if in Mercury is either in Gemini, in Unsign, or in Aquarius. Aquarius is really related to the neurological system, you know, the way we process information, and it's very, it's nice. Or Uranus and Mercury, actually, if it's conjuncting, it could give you an Asperger, or it could relate to, to autism, but also it could relate to genius people as well. And if, uh, yeah, let me see what others. Oh, Saturn. Yeah, you would be surprised, but Saturn actually could indicate long-term memory. So if you have any good Saturn um, uh, aspect in your chart, for example, if Saturn in first house or, uh, yeah, well, Saturn in first house could be a lot of, um, issue with your teeth, with your joint. Uh, it could uh, mean like a very tall person, first of all, and quickly uh, grow and then have some kind of arthritis later on. But we are talking about geniuses right now. So I'm not going to talk about that kind of aspect of Saturn. But if Saturn, Saturn is long-term memory, and if it's going to actually trine or conjunct with Mercury, it could give you a long-term memory, a very good long-term memory. And, you know, like, for example, if you have Saturn and Mercury, then even if you get old, very old, you're not going to lose the, your, your capability to remember. So, so that is a good indicator also not to have Alzheimer or not to have dementia, right? All right. But... If Saturn have any good aspect with Uranus or any good aspect with Mercury, first of all, but also if Saturn has a trine or sextile with Sun, but only if the Sun is well aspected. So if the Sun is in ninth house, it's already a significator of a genius. And if it's expected nicely to Saturn, that is it's a long-term memory as well or it's a high position, for example, high social status somewhere in government or, or something like that. Okay, and uh, uh, so if Mercury and Mars expected well, then it could be something like, all right, I process information very fast and it's easy for me to learn. So look at this chart over here. Mars is seven degree, right? And Gemini is in zero degree. So it is also like not an exact sextile here. It's most likely with Venus, it's more sextiling Mercury. But because Venus and Mars is conjunct over here, so, and then it's sextile anyway with Mercury, it is the processing information is very earthy. So this person over here, it's very easy to learn, very easy to st study. So this person over here, 
uh, has different and a lot of indicators, right? So Saturn long-term memory with sun and because of sun in ninth house, it is the indicator of geniuses. There is a genius sign over here. All right, what else? Uh, let's see, like Mercury is in Gemini and other indicator. Does it aspect Midheaven? Yes, it's conjunct with Midheaven. The sun, yes, it is a very wide conjunction, barely a conjunction. It still does, fourth indicator over here. All right, let me see, Jupiter in Aquarius. Jupiter is the way of processing data. And Aquarius is the sign of um, uh, like... Um, researches and not not research um, deep research because that's also scorpio but um science science so jupiter over here and look at that beautiful stellium in aquarius it could be a person even the north node here uh, it is a, a person who has a scientific mind all right yes uh, so there is a lot of indicator in this chart and I have to tell you and I am very proud of because this is my firstborn son and he has an IQ of 156 and he's quite a genius. He never born, been a little boy since I got him, since I gave him birth. He was an old man. He's a very wise person. He is like, since he's little, he's like, a, a, he's an adult, an old man trapped in a, a small child body and he was always like that very wise really spiritual and very intellectual so here but i suspect for him either a government position or actually because of his a journalist and tv producer major right now i would suspect that one as well but definitely with that leo ascendant and moon he will succeed all right, enough about, you know, bragging about him. Let's see. Um, let's see Elon Musk again. All right. So we were looking for prominent Jupiter. Uh, let's see if Jupiter is prominent. It is in Scorpio. And Scorpio is really deep understanding Jupiter. It's expanding the depth of his understanding right so and and that's his it means like he's it doesn't only means he's very foggy and he was misunderstood but also he's very very intuitive person look at that jupiter and neptune conjunction he's extremely extremely uh in um um intuitive and look at Jupiter, not Jupiter, Neptune in Sagittarius. Neptune in Sagittarius representing uh, like uh, he's a giving person. So he's, uh, he, he's just like, like he's truly have a good heart, I believe so. Yes. All right, what are other indicators? We said uh, either Mercury is conjuncting with Saturn or, or, um, or Saturn in, in actually Gemini, Gemini ruled by Mercury. So that is another indicator to have a really good long-term memory, right? The long-term memory is good, but you see, the speech was delayed and it was foginess and, and it was very hard for early childhood. Early childhood was difficult to learn, but later on it's not. Okay. What are the other indicators? Mars, if he has something like either Mars is related to Mercury uh, or related to Uranus, but Mars actually in Aquarius, Aquarius ruled by Uranus. So he is a quick thinker and uh, because of, uh, he's an initiator of everything scientific base. And look at South Node over there. Uh, North Node over there, so that he's an initiator, anything that is, uh, that is uh, um, yes, what I was talking about before. Look at here, Uranus is also the, the nervous system and also the higher brain, so Saturn, long-term memory, right? Pluto, doing researches, deeply going, deeply doing researches. Okay, what other indicators do we have? Um, actually, in this chart, I don't see a lot of other indicators. Let me see if he has a grand... Uh, no, let me see. No fire. So grand trine between Mercury, Uranus, Moon. Uh, Uranus, Mercury, no. Actually, it's a square. So not that. 
Okay, let's see then Einstein, if he has any other indicator. Oh yes, look at that. Einstein definitely is a genius. So look, mid heaven and sun in, in uh, actually in uh, Pisces and the wide conjunction, just like my son has, but definitely that is a genius indicator. Okay, uh, let me see Capricorn Mars that is exalted over here. And if Mars is in good position, uh, it is exalted in Capricorn that is giving an, a, a, thick, uh, a quick thinker. And uh, look at that, does it make any? Yes, it is actually uh, Mercury. Is it sextiling? No, actually it's sextiling with the sun and mid heaven conjunction. So that is another indicator over here. Look at Mercury, Mercury is in the 10th house. So yes, it's delayed with Saturn. So definitely a delay speak uh, and speech here, but because Mercury is up here and Aries is impulsive, right? And Mercury has a good aspect with the moon. So that is another indicator here as well. And let me see if he has grand trine. So moon and Mercury is there. It's, it's trining. Does he has anything with Leo? No, nothing with Leo over here. Okay. So he also doesn't have the grand trine in fire, but he has a moon and Mercury trine, which could be another indicator. The depth of knowledge, the depth of science is representing by Jupiter. So he is researching, he, he has a lot of deep thinking over here. So that is definitely an indicator here. And you see Mars and North Node. So both of them had Mars and North Node actually conjunct things. Elon Musk had as well, and he has as well. Both of them has Jupiter in eight house, not in Aquarius, but, but so, so the depth of researching is very important for them. Let me see Uranus, because Uranus is also an indicator over here. Does Uranus do anything with us? So Uranus actually trine with Neptune. Okay, uh, what does it mean? So Neptune is uh, connected with the divine and Uranus is like a like very, very unusual thinker and very unusual person. Uh, oh no, Uranus actually trining with, yes, with Neptune. Yeah, I was confused a little bit. Okay, so unusual thinker, uh, he's thinking uh, outside of the box. He actually has communication maybe with aliens or maybe with spirit words. So he also probably tried to communicate with spirit, just like Tesla. Oh, I didn't bring up Tesla's chart, but next time probably it would be very interesting what he had. But those are the indicators, guys. And you see, look, part of fortune, Mercury also. Part of fortune, where do you find your part of gold? Where do you, and it is in his 10th house. So it is like uh, anything Mercury related, anything brain related, right? And research related. Okay, so that is the indicators of uh, the geniuses over here. You know, I was talking about that. What can you do to enrich, uh, for example, your genius within in astrology? So you have to make sure your Jupiter, if it's affected badly, uh, you're going to do a remedy for your Jupiter and you're going to do a remedy for your Mercury. And as I said before, Jupiter is associated with Sagittarius and Pisces and Jupiter uh, has, uh, you know, it has a very creative vision. Um, you can actually use any kind of lapis lazuli or yellow topaz uh, to, to work with or you can drink Jupiterian uh, teas, the dandelion milk pista, you can actually um, have figs and eat figs and sage the house or drink sage tea, um, ginger, any kind of frankincense, uh, frankincense. You can drink those kind of golden milk, what would be a really Jupiterian uh, drink, and you can enrich that. 
you can do the cinnamon sweeping, which is like you put cinnamon all, all over on your floor and you sweep it, and that is a Jupiterian energy. You can use uh, like yellow, turquoise, or purple for your dress actually to enrich, or or your bedding, for example, and it's enriching your mind. Or for example, your office where you study, you can use a lot of yellow to stimulate your brain. Uh, and uh, Mercury, Mercury is an other um, a thing you can use uh, turquoise or you can use any kind of uh, blue related uh, stones for Mercury. You can use agate, you can use yellow agate for focusing, you can use amber. Amber actually is really good for focusing, guys, and tiger eyes. So if you want to stimulate your nervous system and you can use B complex for yourself uh, to stimulate your nervous system as well. And uh, yeah, so that's what I would recommend for you to enrich your Jupiterian and Mercurian uh, energy and the genius within, or if you have any Jupiter and Mercury planet actually uh, affected badly, aspected badly. So if you like my videos, my podcast, please don't hesitate to check out my website. That is www.urbanwitch.org. I truly, truly grateful for your attention and stay with me and listen to me. And I hope I could help you. All right. Until we meet again. Thank you. Bye.